So in a recent video, I set up and tested out a 4K Ultra short throw laser projector in which the image was directly on my wall. And honestly, I was pretty impressed at how things looked when the room was completely dark. However, when light was introduced to the environment, the image quickly became washed out. Now I've heard a lot of good things about ambient light rejecting screens, but I was always just skeptical on whether or not they would make that big of a difference. In this video, I'll be unboxing, setting up, and testing out a screen from Elite Pro AV from their Dark UST line that has their patented light rejecting material to see if the end results are worth the price. Getting things unpacked and laid out took a decent amount of time as everything was very much protected with packaging material so that nothing would be damaged during shipping. And once I had everything sorted, I took the big aluminum frame pieces and positioned them where they needed to be. This was very easy to figure out since there's only one way it'll all fit together. On the next step that I'm about to show you, please learn from my mistake and start out by doing the four corners first and then connect the middle sections together last. There's going to be four of these silver metal pieces, so take two of them and insert into the channels on the frame, making sure they're centered and then use the black screws to secure in place. You'll be doing the exact same thing on the other side as well. And for the corners, you'll be using the black 90 degree angle pieces and the same black screws. And here's why I said to make sure to do the corners first and the middle sections last. It wasn't that big of a deal, but I did have to take apart the middle pieces, do that final corner, and then reconnect the center sections again. Next, there's a center support post that can be slid into the slots that are on the frame. This is going to help reinforce the middle section. Once the frame is built, I'm going to move that to the side and lay out the white cloth that's included in the kit which is where the screen's going to be rolled out on. So the actual screen is the main event and there's plenty of warnings about how delicate this is. I made sure to wear the white gloves they provide and I tried not to touch the material if at all possible. They do say that this is a two person job but I was able to do it myself with no issues. Now when rolling it out, you want to make sure the shiny black material is facing out like you're seeing here. Take your time with this step and avoid creasing the material as you're going along. Here, I'll gently be lowering the frame on top of the screen and centering it in the middle. This next step might have been my favorite, and if there's any dads out there who've put together trampolines for their kids, this will seem very familiar to you. You're going to stretch the springs out using the little tool provided and loop it through the eyelet of the material. They do say to have another person help with this step so you can do opposite ends at the same time, but I did it by myself and it worked out just fine. And finally, you can build the black frame that goes around the outside. This is very similar to building the inside section. There's also going to be some black springs that will go on in the same manner as we just did for the screen that will help keep it in place. Now for getting this mounted, there's going to be four metal brackets that get secured to the wall using these drywall anchors that it comes with. The top two brackets will get attached in this position with the lip facing up towards the ceiling. The two bottom brackets will get loosely attached in this position with the lip facing down. So for getting the screen up, you probably do need a second person for this step. First, make sure the bottom brackets slide into the little channel that's on the top part of the bottom frame. Since those bottom brackets are loose, you'll be able to lift the top part of the screen's frame over the top metal pieces and then have it slide down in place. And if that sounds confusing, don't worry, it does make perfect sense when you're seeing it in person and it was super easy to do. Now as far as technology, if you were to zoom in very close to the screen, you would see that there's a sawtooth design. The top of the jagged angles are black and is where the light is being absorbed. The other surface of the material is white, and this is where the laser from the projector is being reflected back to the viewer's eyes. Now before getting into the results, I wanted to briefly touch on a few things. So traditionally, before ambient light rejecting materials were commercialized, if you wanted to have a big screen in your house, there's a good chance you would have to set it up in a dedicated theater room that would most likely be utilized in very dark environments due to the poor quality of the image from projectors when any sort of light was introduced. That's why I would imagine you and the majority of your friends have a flat panel television in your living room with a size probably around 55 to 65 inches. These TVs get bright enough to combat the light coming in from outside or just your normal lamps or overhead lights being turned on so you can still enjoy a good picture no matter matter what environment. But lately, there has been a shift in what consumers are looking for. More and more people want the experience that comes with a giant 100 plus inch screen size, but they want it in their living room where most of their time is spent. And unless you're extremely wealthy, buying a 100 plus inch TV is probably not an option. And even though the route that I'm trying to go here is still expensive, the price to get a very nice 4K projector and a screen that will block out ambient light is now at the point where for many people it's an option to consider. 
So let's get into the comparisons. Right now my walkout basement is as dark as it can get. This is pretty much ideal conditions. Now what's interesting is when I was testing this out and shooting the footage for displaying the image on just the wall with no screen, I was blown away at how awesome things looked and I was more than happy with the picture. Then when I was recording with the screen, I for sure thought things looked better, but it wasn't until I watched the footage back with them lined up side by side like you're seeing here that I really noticed just how significant the difference was. On scenes like this where there's a lot of the same color, the screen allows you to still see the slight variations of the different shades of green, whereas the image on the right makes it look as if it's all one shade. One of the things that a screen like this is going to help with is improving the contrast ratio of the picture. Here you can clearly see how big of a difference there is between the two. Just notice how everything on the right side seems to be very bright, and how on the left you can see where there are individual shadows being cast since those areas are darker than others. So what I'll be doing is just playing a few more examples from this all dark environment and then I'll move on to the next test, but I'll leave a lot more footage at the end in case you want to see more side by side comparisons. For the next phase of testing, I'm going to have my front four can lights on at 50% and then the six can lights that are towards the back of the room on at 100%. Here you can really start to see what all the hype is about with these ambient light rejecting screens because at this point there is a good amount of light on in this room, but with the screen it's still producing an image that is full of detail and vivid colors that aren't washed out. And for the final test, I'm going to have all my windows open and all the lights turned on at 100%. This is probably the biggest difference of all three lighting conditions. With the screen, I would still very much enjoy watching content in this environment, whereas without the screen, I absolutely would not even bother. I'll do some more back and forth footage like you're seeing here, but then transition back into some more side by side examples.
So feel free to keep watching if you want to see a lot more side-by-side -side comparisons of these different environments, but to wrap things up, I'm 100% sold on this based off my initial testing. Now I would still like to be able to check out some lower priced ambient light rejecting screens to see if there is a big difference, but that will have to be for another video down the road. So I hope you enjoyed watching, and as always, let me know if you have any questions at all.
that night, Clank Sin came crashing from the night sky. Wretched rescued as a peculiar forefather. And the rest is intergalactic.